opinions expressed on the Custody Queen show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal, professional legal advice. The persons discussed are fictional and not based on actual clients. Thought it was love, had kids in between. You can count on us with the custody queens. Yeah, you can count on us with the custody queens. Good morning, everybody, and guess what? You guys loved Tyler Gray from SEAL Team, and we listened, and we brought him back for, you know, another episode. So we are going to dive into Tyler. What's his new life? What does he have coming up? What is the destiny of SEAL Team, Kristen's favorite show? <laughs> we all know that, you know, it was during COVID that I went on a binge of SEAL Team, and, you know, we're getting ready for, what, season seven? Yeah, yeah. Seven, yeah, when, yeah, when does that come out, by the way? Uh, I, I, the short answer is I don't know. There's a, a looming possible writer's strike, so that'll have to well, be sorted. I'm, I'm patiently before. waiting. You know, uh, it, it was Kristen kind of a cliff- has a calendar. Yeah, it was a cliffhanger. <laughs> you know, in the season finale that I was not ready for. But you know, you guys, you guys asked for him. You loved him. It was our most popular episode, so we brought him back. And thank you, Tyler, for coming. Yes. You are such a joy to We're have. So excited oh, to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a, it was great to. Yep. Great to get the, the word to come back, and it's always a pleasure to sit down with you ladies. And, and thanks to Instagram, we have, you know, SEAL Team and Custody Queens me, you know? But there's no shame in my game. If, <laughs> if I like someone, you know, and I think they'd be a great addition to our show, I, I reach out. And rejection, you know, I deal with that well, so. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, Tyler, we're going to start with highs and lows. You know, this is just kind of a recap of the last couple weeks we had. You know, what was a high and what was a low, but we'll start with you. Uh, so this is personal highs and lows. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll start with the high. So I, I we were trying to figure out when it was that I was here. It was, uh, it's got to be like a year and a yeah, half ago. Yeah, it's at least yeah, a year yeah, ago. It's crazy. Time flies. Um, but anyways, I have a uh, a new relationship as of it's nine months now, but new for the 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 uh, the purposes of this. And I took her to meet my parents wow. for the first wow. time. Yeah, for Easter. Are you married? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, we're, we're gonna get the prenup, right? She, she won't listen. She she won't listen to this, so that's coming. <laughs> she, she won't hear this, so she won't. And know. the custody queens will be doing it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, no, it's. Um, but I took her to my, you know, where I grew up to meet my parents, and I basically told her before we went. I said, you know, if 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 you don't break up with me after meeting my parents this this relationship's going Good. all the way like yeah i'm like this is this is the last hurdle to get over <laughs> um but uh but that actually went really good so i was very happy with that um and then lows um ooh, lows I think of uh you know i don't know a low offhand you don't have to have a low if you're I you know really can't I honestly can't think of anything. All right. Well, then you're you're living on the high. Personal, you know. It, it, it I can, can think be, it of can some. Be you know, it can be professional. Um, I, yeah, professional. Uh, I, I I guess I'll go to you know what I was just talking about is you know there's a possible looming uh, writer strike, so um, which kind of puts you know the filming dates and everything in the air. Um, on the flip positive side of that. Uh, I'm actually writing this year on the show. Wow! Yeah, I'm I'm officially a writer on this season, so um, I've now, you know, went from technical advisor to actor to director. Well, technical advisor to producer to actor to director now to writer. So I've so bravo I've, I've for the, the writer. I've done the gamut of jobs, um, and it's great because the more you do each individual one, the more you just learn about the process That's overall. Awesome. I bet it probably makes you a better actor too, of just the, like learning the whole it, process. It, it, it makes you a better every doing each job makes you better at you know any other job on set because obviously it's a, a team effort and they're all related in, in some way. And the more you understand someone else's piece in it the more you can apply your understanding of their part of it to your part of it ha have you like narrowed down how you write like do you have a process do you like go out to the beach with a notepad um well I, it's actually funny that you say that so i'm i have a really severe uh, and again i i i i hate to almost say this because you know what they would call add or adhd i think that is a I think they make it kind of like, I think they're simplifying 
certain conditions sure. to fit into certain categories. Sure. Uh, but um, I don't know if it's that, but for me, like I can't read unless I'm listening to music. Wow. I literally can't read. I, I have to like have music and headphones and then I can read. So for me to write, I have to be somewhere that's extremely busy. Yeah, I, I'm very, I'm very similar, very similar. Like I have to have the white noise, whether it's the TV in the background, even when I was studying for the bar, like everyone would be like, this is how you study. But I'm, I think, cause I was raised with four kids and there was always chaos and la I think that's, but I'm very similar to that. Yeah, and, and, but what you just said, I think is actually critical and that is, it's, it's less about ADHD, ADD. It's less about a, a brain condition. I think there's part of it that's, that's uh, um, uh, physiological, but I think also it's like the chaos that you grew up in. You know, your, your brain's ability to, like for me, I always say that I am calm in chaos, but if there's no chaos in the environment, then my brain is chaotic. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm similar. I, yeah. I, and my brain is always going 100 miles an hour. Like it's not just multitasking. It's like, did I pay for this for my daughter? Did I pay the lunches? Did I file this motion? Did I do that consultation? And I, people say, what goes on in your brain? I said, you don't want to know. No, that's how I am too. In fact, if I try to even watch a show, I have to have subtitles. Because it's the oh, only way. Oh, I hate way. subtitles. I know, and everyone hates me for it. And whenever you put a subtitle on, everyone's pissed off. But for me to pay enough attention to anything for a long period of time, I really have to read with it. And I'll like slow myself down and read slowly to try to match but with the, the words. The subtitles never even match what they're saying. I know, but I, it's the only way I can keep focus. If it's if it's closed captioning, it will. Because I'll do some, you know, Netflix will sometimes just put on the the subtitles, and I'm like, that is not what they just said. So I only, I'm the opposite. I only focus on the subtitles, and then I'm not even watching the show. <laughs> yeah, that's. So yeah. I'm like the opposite. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people are that. Way. <laughs> so uh, we can never watch a movie together. Oh, I, there's a lot of haters when they're watching movies with me. <laughs> All right, Sam, what was your high, your low? Well, my high is quite simple. Uh, we got Margo back. Margo yes. was uh, paralegal for Kristen and I for like half a decade. Yeah, a while. Ish. Uh, and she took a very short break from us and she's she back. She became a mom. So my life's a lot better already. She's been back for like 24 hours, but who's counting? Um, so that was definitely my high. I'm trying to think of my low. I mean, this is good that like we're really like, oh man. Yeah. I gotta really dig deep here. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's struggling a good with sign. the low. Um, I don't know that I have a low. Hey, you don't have to have a low. I'm clumsy. I uh, got. I gave myself some turf toe. Yeah, we we went to the uh, country concert recently, and Tam Sam couldn't rock her cowboy boots. I was the only person with turf toe. Yeah, I was the only person without cowboy boots on, and I was so stressed out the whole time because I have rather large feet, and I was wearing sandals, and everyone's walking around with these giant uh, cowboy boots, and I was yeah. just like, please no. But made out alive. Yeah, and Margo is our supervising paralegal for our Custody Queens team. And, you know, seven months ago, she became a mom. And I fully support new parents that want to take time off. You never get that time back. Uh, I kind of wish I would have taken time off. I was the girl that took four days off and, you know, with a newborn and then just went back to work. But that's not for everybody. And I really encourage new parents to do that. But I begged and I pleaded and I said, can we get 20 hours, 15 hours? You know, you tell me what works for you and I'll make it work. And when you have quality people in your life, I don't even consider her an employee. She's she's more of a friend. Uh, that's the relationship Sam and I have. And there's just so much trust and loyalty. And, you know, I basically was like, please come back. And she's been back for 24 hours. And I know that it's made Sam's life a, a whole lot easier. And obviously that makes my life easier. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a win. It's a win win. Uh, you just turn one of the offices into a mini daycare. Uh, you know, we've yeah. actually yeah. thought about that, but then you get in on all the licensing and liability. During yeah. COVID, we really thought about it. Yeah. Fun fact though, when Kristen, was it Brody? When Kristen had it Brody, was, was I had Brody. a baby crib in my office. <laughs> had all these toys, everyone kept coming in being like, where's your baby? I'm like, it's my boss's. <laughs> I said, here's, here's, you get your own office, but my baby's crib here's is your baby crib, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that is fun. Sam and I have been together for a long time. My high is that T Tyler is here. You know, oh, I, I love having these intellectual conversations with Tyler and we're, we're huge fans and I have the utmost respect for all of them as actors and, and also as humans. I mean, I love watching Tony Trucks, you know, have a baby and grow into motherhood. And she is just such a, 
I don't know if I'm even allowed to say that on uh, you know the radio, but she really is. And so I and I just love watching all the actors grow as humans. So it's it's been fun. And my low, um, you know, maybe just that life can be very overwhelming sometimes, and I kind of get in my head a lot, and I'm getting better at just letting it go, like we just talked with Dr. Imani, but sometimes I can't, and I get in my head, and I kind of break down a little bit, and it takes me a couple days to, to get out of it, and then I'm like, okay, this is my life. I have three kids, and I'm, you know, running a law firm. This, this is my life, and I love it, but it gets very overwhelming at times. And that's okay. It's okay to be overwhelmed. You know, I would say, going back to, you know, when you're talking about similarities in brain, in the way that your brain works similar to mine, is like that, you know, that, um, uh, what was the word you used? That, uh, oh, that overwhelming um, feeling. It's, if it wasn't happening, like that overwhelming feeling is the culmination of you being you for a long time and spinning a million plates and making things happen and then all this stuff happens and then boom it gets to a critical mass and then it's too much at that point but prior to that if you weren't doing that you wouldn't be operating at your capacity and then you'd feel bad about I could be doing more. I could be, you know what I mean? Like I could be. I'm like in my head right now because that's exactly like I kind of, I I did take stuff off my plate and I kind of not checked out, but I was like, okay, something's got to give, something's got to change. I need to be home more with my kids. But I did. I felt like I wasn't reaching my potential. And I also felt like, hey, if I don't do this, I'm putting more work on Sam. And, you know, you kind of feel guilty. But I think it was necessary. But I agree with you that I... I don't think you can ever completely win. You know? No, no, and that and that's actually exactly where I was going. Is it? It's just, um, you know, for me, uh, I truly struggle to figure out ways to relax. Like I, I don't really. It's like going to a beach and like sitting there. I, and actually, we talked earlier. I just moved to Huntington Beach and um, and Gray City. And I used to. The reason I used to hate the beach, which I mentioned earlier before we rolled, was that. I would go to the beach and I couldn't relax and it would just cause this massive chaos in my mind and and I hate this word but anxiety of just like I felt like Was I it should... because of your like your past like your training in the military and kind of so so what I've realized over time is that the the, the military so a lot of people say that the military did this to me or the military did that and don't get me wrong for some people that's true for me personally and i think actually a lot of people you were a certain way and the military is like money you know money is you know and i had my business partner say this to me a long time ago he goes money's a magnifier if you're a good person before you have money you're going to be a better person with money if you were a horrible person before you had money you're going to be worse with money it's a magnifier of who you already are and the military is the same way is is when you go through um, those, you know, especially let's say combat, those extreme situations and scenarios are just magnifying what is already innate within you. Um, and so for me, the ability combat is chaos. So for me, the ability to be comfortable in that chaos took away my ability to be comfortable in calm. And if I, but Again, I could say, oh yeah, the military did that to me. That's not true. I was always that way. It just magnified it. Yeah, Yeah, like when I have a weekend off with nothing, which is which is very rare, it's almost like I'm I have this thing inside me, like, well, what are we doing? Like, where are we gonna go? Like, I I I can't stay home for two days. Like, that's not me. And I almost feel like lazy or like I, I have to be doing things and. I have to train myself that it's okay sometimes to not be doing things. You're correct. And I'm now at the point where I'm also reverse justifying, which is it's also because that's who we are. It's also okay to not be able to relax. Yes, I agree. You know, it's, it's, it's just, if that's just who you are, it's like people are like, you know, you need to take a break. And it's like, you know, I feel better when I don't. 
<laughs> you no, know I, 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 like, I feel better. Honestly, I feel better. <laughs> like with Sam it. and I will go get a massage, and it's like the amount of like when I lay down, and you know, you, most people would just kind of get immersed in you know the massage. And I'm thinking all these deadlines, all these school projects, like soccer, money, financial, like that's what happens to me. So it's like I think I. You know, I enjoy probably 10, 15 minutes of it, but that's... Well, and yeah, I, I joke, but really that's why I like to sleep. Because it's the only time I can really totally shut off and, like, relax. If not, if I'm sitting... Like, even I'm sitting right here, I'm like, going to court tomorrow, you know? <laughs> I just... In, in your head, you just continue and continue. So I, I relate to that a lot. Well, and, there, and there's... Um, I had this... I, 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 don't, I think he was a therapist. I don't even think he was a psychologist or... or uh, but... Um, he defined it not again uh, ADD ADHD all those things are, are really clinical things that fit in the DSM you know diagnoses um, but his thing was uh, he called it ruminating mind and the way he explained it was you know he goes look your brain's a washing machine and it's just constantly on spin cycle and it's going to spin on whatever's thrown into it. And if there's nothing thrown into it, it's gonna start spinning on the stuff that's already there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it could be a, a residual, you know, just, it's constantly spinning. And, um, and that made so much sense to me because there's really not, I, for a long time in my life, I was miserable because I was searching for ways to shut my brain off. And, I finally realized that you can do that, you know, you can do it, and the really the way to do it is chemically, or I mean the way that worked, which is the bad way, is chemically, and so for years I was, you know, chemically shutting my brain off because it was the only thing that was making me relax, right. and then obviously that's unhealthy for a variety of reasons and not something I wanted for my life. Sure. So now what I've learned to do is not, it's not about trying to shut it off. For me, it's just being comfortable with the spin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it can go and I can just, I can just let it spin and it doesn't. The problem is if that's the way your brain is, you trying to take control over it is where the fundamental disorder is. My disorder, and I don't mean like officially, but I mean I had a, I wanted to be able to control my thinking. And I think people like us to a degree don't. So now I'm just okay with, like it's gonna be chaos. I'm, my brain is gonna be constantly spinning and that's okay. It's okay not to be okay. All the time. It's, it's okay and not I, to be I've okay. I've learned that with age. Like it's, it's okay to have a crappy day. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person or that you, you know, need to change things. It just means I'm kind of having a crappy day. And it is it is what it is. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But all right, Tyler, what are you working on now? Because I'm still waiting for season seven. I told him <laughs> that I was very disappointed with the production of only having 12 episodes in season six. I didn't even know it was the season finale. Season six was 10. Five was, 10. Yeah, okay. five was twelve. Yeah, five was twelve. So we got yeah. gypped. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, and I understand that twenty episodes is a lot of work for you guys. So, but maybe we could do fifteen or something. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's, <laughs> you know, yeah, ten that's... was like I literally didn't even know it was a season finale, and then I kept going back the next. I think it was Thursday or Sunday, and I was like, why is there no? So then I'm googling, why isn't Seal Team coming back? And it's like, oh, that was the season finale. I was like, what the heck? But it was a great season, uh, and I love it on Paramount Plus because I love the, I love the curse words because it 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 just brings so much more real life to the characters. You know, like when when you're when you guys are going into battle and, and doing these crazy things, I'm imagining the words that were coming out of your mouth. And Paramount Plus is much better, much better platform. Yeah, it's it's definitely you know it's it's shocking the rules that are on network TV. You know, when you really look at it, you. So I mean, some of them make sense because anyone could watch it, and then other ones you're like, "Yeah, no, I, I, I rule, agree." You know, like, yeah. like you know, with like dead bodies, like the rules are just like, if a body is already dead, it could be cut in half and burned, like you see on CSI, but you can't see the mechanism that causes that. Like, there's all these crazy rules, you know. And I'm like, I want to know who makes those rules. I, it's, it's the, uh, I can't think of the name, the organization that does the ratings and all that. It's just, there's a great documentary, by the way, about it. It's very uh, arbitrary. Let's it's put it probably that very just, yeah, subjective. Too. Yeah, it, it is. If you, by the way, if you use one 
it's like separate from violence and this is like the movie rating system but two four letter words you're in our territory whereas if you just kept one four letter word and had this much violence pg-13 you know it's uh, and you know, it's kids really can literally crazy. Google anything these days. So it, it's, you know. That's it, the problem I have is now in an internet connected world, I feel like, you know, when cable TV, or not cable, when uh, broadcast television, you know, anyone can turn it on and get it, I understand the restrictions. But now it's yeah. like, guys, like, yeah. no, we live you, in a very you can different see a world. woman in a bra or, you know, even the smoking and all this, but you can't say, you know, the S word. It's like, you know, but I, I would laugh when I would watch uh, David, you know, filming and he would say something, you know, like that was stupid. And I'm thinking, OK, that's not the word he would be using yeah, in this yeah. situation. Well, yeah, especially so. especially in the military. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Um, but and, yeah, no, it's it's I, I think season six represents um, we really uh, it was the first season. I, I think we st- we felt it out season five. Yeah. Of like, well, what can we do? Oh, that the beginning of season five, that those first two episodes. I think it was God is War or something. Trent, was that, that North Korea? No, I always forget. They that was uh, um, that was uh, when too. you guys remember when David captured like the son of the. Oh yeah, yeah, Al Hazrat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, that was that. Those two episodes. So, so five, we basically kind of started really writing to the streaming. But six was, I think, when it was really figured out. I love the female, okay, I love is, the female aspect of six because they kind of used... Oh, the RPG? Yeah, yeah the or, RPG, our, and they were all females. There's like so many... And what was it? Was our, it Syria? Our, I think it was yeah, Syria. Yeah, yeah, Syria, yeah. And they had a bunch of really cool females. It was a female mil- like army. Yeah, it's a, it's a YPG. That's what it is, YPG, um, which is real. And um, uh, which was also awesome because obviously in real life, we had a bunch of really cool stunt women playing them you know so um uh, let me tell you like that show you hang out with dudes so much that having those women on set was so (laughs) nice i'm still still waiting for my call dead body you know i'm I'm still waiting tyler the 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 floozy in the bar the dead body i mean i could be uh, like you have to think of what we got now he's a writer (laughs) i know come on right i can even be a bartender Yeah, we, you, know, you know, we've never, it's uh, you, It's really funny you mentioned that because I've said this, because I've shot, like, directed several bar scenes, and I'm like, we've never had a bartender that you knew who they were. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're at the bar, yeah. like, every other episode, and we've never had, like, a bar, you know, like, the bartender Oh, I would kill it. I, I can't make drinks, but, you know. I, oh, it's all fake anyway. So all right. You just, you you know, know, I'd you have just, you guys all dancing on the bar. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, we, um... <laughs> No, we'll, I'm, I'm we'll, waiting. We'll, I'm we'll, waiting, we'll Tyler. Right, waiting. My people and your people will talk. <laughs> Actually, I'll talk to your people because I, I don't. I don't have people. Um, but uh, uh, projects, projects. Um, so I did record a couple episodes of a podcast, um, which you know, I don't know how how this podcast came up with with you guys, but for me, you know, I do a lot of podcasts, and I just never wanted. People would say, hey, you should do one. And I was just like, you know, I don't want, I don't want to do something that other people are doing. So I was like, as a veteran, I know a ton of dudes doing, you know, veteran podcast. And so I kind of shied away from it. And then finally somebody, uh, it was actually my, my girlfriend was kind of like, you know, you, you are saying when you go on these podcasts, you get really good reactions uh, from what you're saying, which is, you know, sometimes different than than you know it's 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 um you're very well liked it's you're very well, well thank liked. you but it's it's a, I'm, I'm trying to when i go on podcasts i'm specifically trying to put out information that i wish i had known five years prior as an example and she just kind of said like well you know if you if you had a podcast isn't that isn't your voice kind of the unique angle it doesn't matter you know everyone's podcast even if it's two podcasts about you know um uh family law they're going to be completely different based on the sure. so she told me that and i was like oh yeah that's, <laughs> that's a good point point. didn't think yeah, of it that it's way. a really good way to get like you said information i mean that's kind of why we started it is we, we 
you know, we we just wanted to educate people like, hey, divorce doesn't have to be so bad. Hey, we don't have to screw up kids for the next 20 years just because you guys grew apart. And so we really just started it to like educate people and the feedback was was really good. And we love having, you know, guests on that. that I mean, every time I have a guest on, I take something away from the episode. I, and so that was the real seller for me is that, you know, I get something from, you know, well, some get, or some some hosts don't really talk much about themselves. But when they do, like I did this one with the guy named Travis Haley, which is a great podcast that he does called The Bridge. And, and I learned from him because he was, you know, some people just ask questions. He you know, talks about himself a little bit as well. So I got a lot from that. And then I realized um, that I should probably, um, it was something... I did feel like I had something to say, so I started working on that. It hasn't been released yet. Um, I got a movie coming out called Kandahar. I'm looking May forward to that. 28th, I think. I think it's Memorial Day weekend. I think May I 28th. saw some PR about it. it might be May 26th. May 26th, May 28th. Um, well, called... Chris, Chris will let you know when it's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure I post it on our Custom Queens Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was fun. We shot that in Saudi Arabia. I remember so... when you were telling me that you were there for like like several months right yeah three yeah about three and a half months that was i think it was over was the wild. holidays or something uh yeah i was there from from october till almost february i think you posted a picture of like a christmas tree in, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Like, that's kind of funny yeah yeah i had some yeah it was an interesting um interesting time in the desert um and then other than that i've actually been uh really uh, i'm actually working on a book a sci-fi book which is i think it's the first time i mentioned it um but i've been working on a sci-fi book that uh yeah we'll see what happens but we're about um a quarter of the way through it and i think i i love sci-fi it's my favorite genre so um this is very much a, a passion project and uh it's a pretty i love sci-fi because you can just do anything build a, yeah. yeah build a world you know and um it's very uh you know it's got elements of like hunger games and it's an it's an very interesting cool. world yeah I'm, I'm excited i'm very excited about it. all right tyler that i don't know this 28 minutes went way too fast but yeah. we are gonna have a part two with tyler gray because we haven't even got to the talk box yet so we need to uh, get into more depth with Tyler, hear more about his book and everything else that's going on with him. So join us. Thank you for joining us this Saturday. Make sure you join us next Saturday for part two with Tyler Gray. And uh, it was an awesome morning. Absolutely. Thank you for, for coming and we can't wait to see you next week. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys next week. And make sure you are following him on Instagram. Uh, he is at Tyler Gray. Uh, Tyler A. Gray. Tyler A. Gray. He's always kind of giving info on what's going on in his life. But, you know, who doesn't love SEAL Team and everything else Tyler does? But remember, you can always call us at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. And remember, let, let love, love rule. rule.